Jupe Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 4, Har du aldrig sit Vitek? And the... Right, have I been... Yeah. Um, Vitek is apparently this show. I don't think I ever watched it. But, yeah. Um, direct translation. Have you, haven't you watched Vitek? Uh, yes. So... Spoilers for these first four episodes. Uh, let's see another episode I love, and let's get right into it. So, yeah, um, I'm going to hell because I laugh way too hard at Stewart's joke about, you know, oh, it's, you can't. It's important that you don't sleep on your job. Oh yeah, uh, I think it was your your uncle fell asleep on the job. He was a bus driver. He was fired posthumously. Oh God, that's that's truly yeah. Oh God. Um, let's see. And yeah, we have one of Stewart's many jokes about pedophilia. And yeah, so the because the kifia and the other. Muslims have apparently lost some parts, you know, the, the, yeah, Stuart sells them some, and, yeah, um, which, you know, the, the, yeah, with the joke being, but it's for your vehicle, you know, but yeah, the, the, um, I don't know if the it's it sounds like it's at least meant to be Arabic. I'm not entirely sure. I I don't really trust Anas Madison to actually have a, a Muslim actually write and and teach him pronunciation of something. So I I worry that it's probably not Arabic or at the very least it's not like a sentence that really makes sense. He's just imitating you know he's he's heard people speak actual arabic and he's he's imitating what he thinks it sounds like and it also goes untranslated so it's very othering and yeah very funny when he goes over the various things that he could sell and he apparently still has betamax like holy crap so he's the one you know <clears throat> Hmm. And <clears throat> Danny finds these, uh, yeah, let's um, firecrackers. Let's go with that and sells them to these kids. And I feel bad. I d I'm not gonna dwell on it. I just want to point out these kids are clearly just so excited about being in a scene with Anas Madison for several shots they just they can't stop smiling even though that's not really supposed to be yeah the the vibe of this anyway but but yeah um and it's just you know you're watching this and again I'm going to hell because I laugh at this but you know he's selling those are not actual those are not firecrackers those are like explosives and he's selling it to these kids. And he's also giving this really a horrible, you know, you got to pay attention. You want to lose your fingers? If you don't pay attention, I'm going to bite them off. And what was it? Don't, don't make, you know, you, it's important that you don't make something with these that's too big to fit in a mail slot. And what was the other thing? There was at least one more. Let's see. It was the, right, if... I have no idea what the word is in English, but you know, if if one of the fireworks doesn't go off, don't walk, you know, don't go and investigate it if you've eaten recently. And yeah, then we learned that Stuart got more than enough money just from selling one month of empty bottles, which Holy crap! I think he might have a drinking problem. It's, there's there's a there's one or two clues. 
you know, the, the fact that he's literally got a bottle opener attached to his belt at all times, not a great sign. That's, that's very, like, that's a, that's a red flag. That's a, that's a form of, um, intervention, kind of, yeah. And then we have this really misogynistic joke about Gandhi, you know, taking the, the money, this, this idea that women intentionally trick a man into impregnating them just so they'll have, you know, <clears throat> yeah, so that they're financially, you know, but, and, and it's, it's again, it's one of these things, like, if you're a misogynist you, and believe in the patriarchy, is that not the only thing they are able to do? You don't want them working, and you don't, you know, you yeah, and you don't think they should get financial support from the government. Well, you know, getting pregnant is literally the only approach they have. So why are you getting mad at them for doing like? What that tells me is you want her to starve to death on the street. That's that's th those are the options, you know. Uh, let's see, and and like most bigotry, it you know, it largely is not true. There might be a statistically insignificant number of people out there, but you know, again, just like have you met a woman? Like the the, the vast majority of them. They're not looking to to trap people. They want for the you know not all of them want children, but those who do, by and large, want their children to have a happy childhood. They don't want yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. And then we have the yeah, and this is this is the in in. I think it was episode three. They they talk about ah, oh, could she really be pregnant already? Which always sounded weird to me. Like what? I mean, she can become pregnant after one unprotected intercourse. Yeah, but, I mean, do you mean that she's already showing? Because that wouldn't really make a lot of sense. And then in this one, she's showing up with an actual what do y'all call that? Pram, I guess. Um. Which, you know, yeah, okay, no way that, you know, that is definitely not Danny's if there is a baby in there. And it is also, it's, I'm going to hell, it is very funny when she, is, you know, she's, she's trying to escape, you know, she does escape with the money. The way she manhandles the pram, you know, if there was a baby in there, it's, yeah. Also good detail that, I forget, I'm not sure it's every single time, but a lot of times on this show, when the door opens to, to the, the hall, there's this distant sound of a baby crying, which is just, oh my god, you know, like, the the fact that it's nearly every time is, is deeply disturbing. Let's see, but, but yeah, you know, it is, the handling of the joke is kind of funny. This thing of, you know, Stuart's sitting there counting the money, puts it down, and she just, she bolts past Danny, grabs the money, and very slowly gets away. Like, how do they not manage to stop her? Just, yeah. And the speaker at the end, you know, brings up VTech, which Danny mentioned earlier. And, you know, yeah, the speaker as like, it's, it's this thing of like, oh, I, you know, okay, he just, he got distracted by it, because he's like, why did they stop, sh why did they stop showing VTech, you know, which is like, that has nothing to do with the events of the, of the show, you know, and Danny, like, it's very broken clock, occasionally Danny is right about something, apparently, I looked it up on Wikipedia, which is also where I found the, definition of a lazy farmer from Aztec, the, the, apparently, yeah, the, the guy who hosted VTech, Egon Schmidt, he died in 1999, so before 2003 when this episode aired, and he was apparently, before hosting this 
and it does say science program. Before that, he was a, a public school teacher. So, yeah, makes a lot of sense that he would go on to host a a science show. But yeah, you know, and and yeah, Dan Danny hears speaker say that, and he's like, ah, oh, I, th I think the guy died, and and speaker's like. He didn't die, did he? And and Danny's like, I, I don't know, you know. Which that's that's a just that's a regular conversation, you know. Suddenly they are having, you know, it's it's short lived, but that is an actual, you know, someone will ask at the water cooler, why did they stop airing that show? Someone else, but I, I think the guy died, and the other people, he didn't die, did he? And and the, the other guy's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I, I you know, I, I, it's, I thought you knew, no, I'm, I, maybe he didn't die, you know, just, <laughs> it's, I just, I love this blurring of the line, this kind of meta thing of just, yeah, suddenly they're just having a conversation with the speaker, even though the, you know, like, the completely non-meta thing and and I honestly, it's been so many years since I watched other Christmas calendar, Advent calendars than this one, really. But I think maybe they used to just not be able to hear the voice. Like, the episode would actually end, and the characters would just maybe just be looked like, you know, oh, how are we going to deal with this? And then the speaker would, would say, and and no one would react to the speaker. Because the speaker is there for the audience's benefit. It's part of the, you know, uh, it's not diegetic. So, but but yeah, this it's it's just, it's very funny. Um, yes, that is it for this one. I will try to do one tomorrow. So hope to catch you then.